You can focus on something you're grateful for or someone you're remembering, especially today, or just the pace of your own breath. We find a comfortable place in your seat and take a few easy breaths as we settle into this shared silence together. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? Spirit of life and love, God of many names and no name, source of all. We offer prayers of gratitude this morning for love, for community, for tenderness, for celebration, even in masks, even virtual even far apart. We offer prayers of sorrow, lamentation, and rage for a destruction the world over, for the destruction we have inherited or wrought with our own hands or sat idly by and watched or that we ourselves or our ancestors have suffered. We know the presence of love, even during these days of long absence. We know the purpose of love, even during these times of tremendous uncertainty. And we know the fruit of love. which is courage and strength and the power to help make the world right. We ask this day for safety for ourselves, for our families and friends, that those we cherish be held in care that those who have gone before make their presence known to us. That the strength that lives in us grows stronger than our fear or our complacency.
We ask that when we tremble in fear, in anticipation and in uncertainty, to be reminded that the power of love lives in us, stronger than death, stronger than terror, ready to make the world anew. We ask these things for ourselves and for those we love, for those we do not love, amen. reading this morning comes to us from the Reverend A. Powell Davies, a mid-20th century Unitarian minister. Let me tell you why I come to church. I come to church and would whether I was a preacher or not, because I fall below my own standards and need to be constantly brought back to them. It is not enough that I should think about the world and its problems at the level of a newspaper report or a magazine discussion. It could too soon become too low a level. I must have my conscience sharpened, sharpened until it goads me to the most thorough and responsible thinking of which I am capable. I must feel again the love I owe my fellow human beings. I must not only hear about it, but feel it in church. I do. I wonder what A. Powell Davies would have to say about how church looks during these pandemic days. And yet our project remains very much the same, the purpose of our gathering, very much the same, though the feeling of our gathering is so different. Our sermon this morning is actually from a colleague of mine, the Reverend Oscar Sinclair via video. He's the minister of the Unitarian Church of Lincoln, Nebraska. And I know that were we in person and were Oscar here with us, you would extend to him the utmost hospitality and the warmest UCB welcome.
Good morning. My name is the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. I serve the Unitarian Church of Lincoln, Nebraska. It is good to join you this morning. It's not a unique observation to say that we live in unusual times right now. The COVID-19 pandemic, the climate crisis, the increased attention on seemingly intractable racial bias in our institutions have come together to create one of the highest tension summers of my life. And the question that I keep returning to over and over again is some variant of this. What is the role of the church right now? Back when I had hair, I learned in seminary that ministers and churches as a whole have three distinct roles, that of priest, prophet, and pastor. And in different seasons, we are more present in one of those roles or another, and some of us are more comfortable in one role or another, but all three are important to the work. Priest, prophet, pastor. I want to focus these morning, this morning on those three roles and how we do them as a church rather than as a person. So first, we'll talk about the priestly role. And I'll just start out by saying that priest is a strange word in our context. I know the Unitarian Church of Lincoln has a long and proud humanist history, and I think every time I use the word priest to describe myself or a function of the church, at least some of our members get a little bit itchy. But here's what I take that to mean. The priestly role is the ritual role that the community plays. And as relatively egalitarian as we are as a tradition, the Unitarian Church of Lincoln does play a ritual role in the community. That's what we do when we mark life passages, when we gather as a community together for weddings or for memorials or to recognize new life in child dedication. We do each of these in community. They are meaningful because of the gathered. Blessing comes from the community extending support in the rituals that we host. And I also want to say that even in this moment, even when we aren't gathered in the same way, the community still feels very present. But I, so I've done weddings, and memorials since March. And usually it's about half a dozen of us outside in a park. But each time I do one of them, I'm, I'm aware that I'm there on the behalf of the broader Unitarian Church of Lincoln, that the community is there with us, that we can all feel the presence of the broader community in the moment. A church is about making meaning in the world. And when we pause to mark significant moments in our lives, we're helping to create meaning. It is, as we say at memorials, one of the most ancient and holy roles of the religious community. The prophetic role is in some ways where Unitarian Universalism writ large has been most comfortable the last few years. And I, I apologize, my dog has just come in, so I'm gonna pause the recording for just a second. I am obviously recording this not in a pulpit, but in uh, the guest room of our house. And we have a very excitable Labrador puppy who came in and decided to say hi. Um, ministry in this moment is an interesting thing. But the prophetic role, so the prophetic role in Unitarian Universalism is where we have often felt most comfortable the last few years. And the prophetic role is the one that claims from a place of faith that the world that we live in and the world that we ought to inhabit are different, that something is wrong and that we have a responsibility to address it. Now that's very much in our wheelhouse as a people. Every time the Social Justice Committee here in Lincoln puts together a right here, right now letter writing campaign, every time we show up at a community event calling for justice, every time we put up a sign in front of our house saying that a better world is possible, that is the church being prophetic. 
And being prophetic is not just about proclamation. It's also about how we act in quiet moments of hope or a decision not to allow guns in our building or putting in solar panels during a renovation. Moments that break down the division between the world as it is and the world as it ought to be. And there's also legitimately a tension in the prophetic role because a real part of this role, this legacy, is pointing out where we have fallen short. That's true of the prophets in scripture, and that's true of prophetic moments now, pointing out the gulf between the world as it is and the world as it ought to be requires a critique of the world as it is. And for those of us for whom the world as it is, is a comfortable, mostly happy place, and I very much include myself in that, that critique is often uncomfortable fly in the ointment asking us, what is the cost of your comfort? And it's probably worth adding in this venue that all of us develop comfort in these different roles. All of us ministers develop comfort in these different roles. And the prophetic role is not the one that I am most comfortable with because I have lived a privileged life. The circumstances of my birth mean that I am playing with an unearned inside straight. And if the church is to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable, I am pretty sure that I'm one of the people that's supposed to be afflicted. And so I've had to learn the prophetic role, not least from watching and learning from my colleagues, Sadie, very much among them. And the last piece that I want to say is is this. The prophetic role for our churches can often feel like the most important and the most present, especially in our particular tradition. But it's not the only role. One of the reasons we can be effective in our justice work is that it's not the only thing that we do. We also do the priestly work. We mark major moments in the lives of individuals and the lives of the community. And we do pastoral work, caring for each other as individuals and as a community. This is what distinguishes the church from the prophets, I think. We have other roles as well. So our critique is always in the context of a generational, caring, pastoral community. That's a tension at times. We could talk about that in a different sermon, but I've been given a time limit. But it is what makes churches unique. And so the last role that we're going to talk about this morning is the pastoral role. This is what Pope Francis means when he says that the church should be a field hospital for souls. And like the priestly role that we started with, the pastoral role is focused on meaning making. But it goes about it differently. Rather than finding ways to connect individual stories with something larger, which is one of the basic functions of ritual, churches are pastoral when they focus on the needs and meaning making of their members in the moment. It is to be held in care, basically. Two and a half years ago, my wife and I, uh, our first child was born six weeks early and unexpectedly. Now, Ailish is a happy toddler these days, but for a week in the midst of a bitter Nebraska winter, we were very scared. I was very scared. And at some point, I think it was the third night, a nurse came into our NICU waiting room and told me that there was somebody from the church out in the waiting area. And this was strange because I hadn't asked anyone to come and was very much not interested in working. But it was the minister emeritus of the church that I serve, um, Reverend Fritz Hudson. And he came to remind me that while I was leading the church, the church and my colleagues were also there to hold me up when I needed it. And then he asked me what I needed. Do you have a sermon you could preach on on short notice, I asked him. Yes, several. I had no plan for having a, a baby early, but Fritz and other members of this church and ministers in Kansas and Nebraska organized to make sure that I could step away for a moment. That's not the first or the only story like that I have. When I was in my mid-20s, a colleague of mine 
was killed. And that afternoon, I called up a friend who, without asking, showed up on my back porch with a tub of ice cream, a pack of American spirits, and absolutely no agenda other than to be present with my grief. That's the pastoral role. Maybe not the American spirits. Um, that was before I quit smoking. Kids, don't start. But not trying to impose meaning onto what is happening, but just to be present, to say to each other, whatever this is, you're not alone in it. And maybe, eventually, we can help each other by our presence. There's a, a story that I know that's originally from the TV, well, I don't know where it's from originally, but I know it from the TV show, The West Wing. And it goes like this. This guy's walking down the street, and he falls into a hole. And the walls are so steep that he can't get out. A doctor passes by, and the guy shouts up, Hey, hey, you, can you help me? And the doctor writes a prescription, throws it down in the hole, and then moves on. Then a priest walks by, and the guy shouts up, Father, I'm down in this hole, can you help me? And the priest writes out a prayer, throws it down in the hole, and moves on. And then a friend walks by. Hey, Joe, it's me. Can you help me out? And then the friend jumps into the hole. And our guy says, what are you doing? Because now we're both down here. And the friend says, yeah, but I've been down here before. And I know the way out. pastoral role is simply about presence with one another in all the moments of life, which is not a bad place to end this reflection on. So if you haven't in a while, give someone a call, ask how they're doing. As I'm recording this, we're four months into the pandemic, four months since we closed the church building in Lincoln. And it's hard. It's been a hard couple months. So stay safe. Stay healthy, but most of all, be with each other in this moment and in all the moments and in all the roles. Be the church. Amen. Amen. As Oscar says, the church does three things. We hold rituals to mark time and to celebrate our small individual stories in the context of larger ones. We proclaim the truth that we believe will set us all free and we do that in our speaking and in our actions together and apart. We also pastor to one another and to our community by offering presence, tenderness. Each of us called to do these things. Fit your small story of loss or celebration into the bigger one. Tell the truth as best you can and seek it fearlessly, even when you are the one who trembles. It with sorrow, loss, fear, and rage, your own and that of others, with as much courage and as much tenderness as you can muster. Be the church. May it be so, and amen. You're invited to rise in body or in spirit for a closing hymn, number 131, Love Will Guide Us.